have video? Do we have audio? Yes, we do. All right. Good morning and welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Gellum, and this is uh, another ongoing trip, another ongoing episode in our trip through uh, Shun the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate. Uh, as a part of the Eggplant community, uh, Eggplant uh, show being a podcast about the secret life of games, uh, candid conversations about game development. Highly recommend that you check that out. Um, I really enjoy being a member of the community there. So, um, we are here in Sharon the Wanderer. We have our ongoing adventures of Eggplant the Wanderer, and um, where we left off was not particularly great. So, um, there we go. So let's jump back in. So the Tower of Fortune is, we're already near the end. Uh, it's a 14th floor dungeon. And we were in a situation where we, we had already used up our undo grass. We used up most of our um, really useful consumables. Um, we have an inventory, but it's an inventory of, of a lot of cruft. Um, so, like, if we reassess real quick, we have a pinning staff for teleporting around, which is going to be useful in this floor of the dungeon. But the, the thing about Tower of Fortune is that after this floor, I believe we're going to have our first boss encounter with Riva, um, the actual owner of the Dice of Fate. Um, so the penning staff isn't going to really help us much there. Um, we have weeds from our previous use of the undo grass. Um, we have one revival grass. And that, that's, yeah, we only have one, one save, so to speak. So we have some heals that I think we're going to end up using here unless, well... Let's go back and look at the map. So the map that we had, we just got onto this floor, I think, right when the previous stream stopped. Um, we have a point trap there. We can go ahead and go up and get the arrow. Um, what we may... <laughs> assuming that I don't trip on any traps along the way, our strategy for this floor may be that we want to try and build up as best as we can in preparation for that Reva fight. Um, tag scroll. Um, I don't know that we've seen that. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so reading this will let you place a tag on a selected weapon or shield. So, um, which is great. So we've tagged the Dodanuki. The tagging is something that happens in the uh, Hermit's Hermitage village. Um, after you get done with the first three preliminary towers of past, present, and future. So when you get to the Hermit's Hermitage, you can put a tag on a weapon or a shield, and that gives you the ability to keep that shield even if you get uh, wrecked in the dungeon, which is probably what we're about to do here in a second when we fight Reva. Um, so normally you lose all your inventory, just like any other conventional roguelike. Um, but in this case, um, you keep the tagged weapons. Uh, and we haven't... As frustrated as I am with our cash box shield being um, behind the curve on damage reduction, I do still want to keep it because we've put some effort into upgrading it. So we're going to go ahead and read that. We're going to put... And you can see the, there's a blue indicator on um, the icon to the left of the weapon name. There's another little blue piece there that says this is a tagged item. So... One other weird decision... I don't know if it's a weird decision. We have rocks. Um, arrows may be better for sheer damage output with Reva. I think we're going to have to swap those out. Um, let's go ahead and read, actually, a uh, trap deletion scroll. That'll clear all the traps on the dungeon. Um, so that we can walk around freely here. Uh, we have two Gios types. Now let's see what's the best way to exploit the parity on this. They can come around this 
pitfall here for almost like a little pincer attack. I think if I move to the right, that should draw the one down. Um, I don't know if the other will try to go around and attack Jirokichi or not, but at least I'll be in a situation where I'm not at risk of being attacked from two directions. Um, Jirokichi will have to, to set the pick for me. Oh, there we go. Or they'll switch up like that, and that's perfect. And we get we get our attack and Jirokichi's attack that way. So that's exactly what we wanted there. So that was 270 experience points. Our next level is, is sort of in range. It's about just under 4,000. I'm, I'm thinking we'll have to see how feasible it is to farm here a little bit. Um, 24 experience points, that's not going to do it. <laughs> that's We're going to be waiting a while, if that's the case. Um, let's see. Do we want to gamble with a bracelet? Let's see what we got. In the name of science, why not? Um, well, I'm not exploding for every step I take, so that's promising. Oh, I walked into that. That was, that was sloppy. All right, let's let's wander around a little bit. Wink, wink. Um, dragons, not fun. We talked about that on last stream. Right now, we got a pretty good placement on that one because of being so close. But the two sleeping dragons that are here are definitely going to be a problem if they wake up because we're going to be looking at ranged attacks. They blow fire sometimes from across the dungeon. Um, let's see if we can cut across this right part of the room to get to those poofies so that we don't get totally swarmed. And let's use a rock. There we go. And give up one here too. We got the Shaga coming behind. There we go. Double team it. All right, so now we have another Shaga further up. It's asleep. Let's see if we can try to position Jirokichi so that we can be in the best possible place to attack that dragon. I think if we come up to the side, um, let's see if we can draw him back. There we go. <sighs> All right. I was hoping to, that we would be able to get um, a little stronger hit. We're going to come back to that dragon. That dragon and Chaga being right there, is good. that's going to be really troublesome. As long as we don't wake it up, it should be fine. <sighs> oh. Okay. Unforced error there with the Shaga. I thought we had thought we had it with that one hit. And we were just short of the damage that we needed to kill it. So now we are um, <laughs> now we're in even better shape. Um, let's see what we've got here. Um, we can go ahead and the weeds we can get rid of just to free up that inventory slot to put the super torch in. I mean, there, there's definitely risk in exploring in any game like this. Like, who knows what's going to come around the corner. But I'm so worried about how we're going to be stacked up. Um, oh, no! The controller is almost out of battery. Um, whoa. Okay. Well, we took care of the Reaver problem right there. Um... So the katana bee, if we if we look back, wow, yeah. So that katana bee had a had an aura, and apparently it was a, a juiced up attack aura. 
I mean, katana bees at this part of the dungeon, they're they're going to do some damage, but they're not going to do to they're not going to one shot you at 146. So maybe at that point it had an attack aura. I don't know if katana bee would be leveled up. I don't remember that being the case when we got in, where it would have hit another monster. Um, either way, all of this is a a very long explanation uh, that can be shortened into. Um, we got got, <laughs> we got nailed. So, and and really, probably, we can ask for ask for assistance. Um, so one of the things, so I guess this is something cool that we can talk about with Shira, and I won't do it for the stream uh, because I want to go ahead and continue playing. But um, you can ask for rescue codes with the. Um, with Sheer and the Wanderer, you can put a code out there for rescue. And there are different forms of rescue that can be out there. Um, in the initial dungeons for past, present, and future, you can send a revival grass, or I, I believe any sort of healing grass, uh, and revive someone. Uh, later post-game dungeons, and potentially the Tower of Fortune, I don't know exactly where it lines up with this, um, you will have to go actually adventure in the dungeon. Uh, whoever decides to rescue you, whether they're picking up a code that you place online or um, there's an online listing um, of, of those codes. You can also like send a screen cap of a code to enter in. But whoever is picking up that code and attempting the rescue, uh, they have to go down into the dungeon and, and basically do like a corpse run um, to, to get your body and then do a healing item there. Um, so... You have to think about when you ask for assistance. I mean, for any given run, you have three times to do it, so it's no big deal. If if I wasn't streaming, the decision I would have to make here is it, how how viable is this run? Is this run worth saving? Because one, once I do this, um, and maybe you know, let's let's go ahead. I, I'm not expecting it to happen, but we can show what you can do. Um, while you're waiting for rescue, because uh, Sharon's kind of interesting in that you can do things um, in sort of a holding pattern while you wait. They don't want you to just uh, sit and not play the game. So let's ask for assistance. And see, it takes you to save the data, to basically save the state of where we left off. Okay, so now the, the top menu that we have changes a little bit. Um, we could do get rescued, uh, which is which is sort of an odd thing. It's like I, I I thought I just asked for assistance, but it's it's because of the way that um, the online system works outside of the game. They have it totally systemized outside of the the roguelike piece. So um, we'll send a rescue request. How do we want to send it? So if we send it as a password, um, this will do this. It gives you this full password, and and isn't this lovely? This is like the 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 remember the mantra from Fexanadu on the NES, like just a total scramble of characters. Um, on Vita, God bless the Vita, um, you'd have to enter all of these in because I don't think there was an online one, an online rescue system available on the Vita. But, um, and I have actually done a rescue with this, so with this type of password. So you could screen cap this, you could post it on Twitter, um, post it to all of your followers. Um, or posted it, you know, in whatever community you're in. Um, and that's just out there um, to be to be taken by whoever would want to pick it up. You can also do with the internet connection. This gets you into the uh, into the, the broader online set of rescues that you can do. So we could say a category, um, I don't know why you would want to li limit it to English only. Please, less people potentially wanting to rescue me. But um, it's an option they have, I guess. Um, we'll take anyone. And then you could put a message here. <laughs> so you could say, um, help. You could go through all of these different, um, I screwed up. Mood. Uh... I was in a bad spot. You can you can piece together these different messages as a part of the rescue request. Uh, this is actually similar when we get to a part where we would name items um, from the raccoon pot. It's the same sort of thing. 
Um, we do thank you notes. Um, go back to our index here. Seasonal. For St. Patrick's Day. Hap Happy Arbor Day. Happy Arbor Day. Please come save me <laughs> in Sheer and the Wanderer. Um, happy, happy White Day. Um, how about no? Festivus for the rest of us. Eh. So anyway, there's an... <laughs> There's a number of different things you can have here. Um, other interjections or random ramblings. Uh, so this is available to you as a part of the rescue. Um, you can back out. You can quit. Um, eventually, what will happen is that when you send a rescue request, um, you, can pe you can periodically check on the status of it. So um, in the case where I had sent that other password online, um, or I, I posted that other password to someone else, um, and they did it without engaging with the internet connection part of this. They can they would give me a revival spell password that would be very similar to what we had, and, and this is where you get all of this. So you can enter in the revival spell the same way that you can um, the rescue request. Um, we'll back out. So here, here in a few minutes, we'll cancel the request and we'll, we'll get back into it. But what we can do is, so there are a couple of other things. We can go to waiting for rescue. Um, and we'll go, actually, let's see. So if I do, if I send the rescue request, here, we'll do it really quick. Because there's no harm in doing it while, you know, for the five or 10 minutes while I show some of the other modes. So we'll say, um, help. Happy Arbor Day. Oops. Okay. I don't know if it's funny enough to do it again. We'll just go help, please. So we'll send it. We connect to the internet to post it to the shared system. Take this opportunity to hydrate a little bit. Or more accurately, caffeinate with our Coke Plus coffee product placement. Ah, and see here, here you go. So it gives you a rescue number. Um, and I don't believe that's the same. It's a unique rescue number. It looks like it's in the friend code format for Switch, but I believe it's a unique uh, rescue number for Sharon itself. Um, at least I don't think that's my friend number. Why don't we go look? We got... Nope. Totally different. All right. So, while we are potentially waiting for rescue... You can confirm the rescue number. Um, you can also give that to other people instead of the 462-character password that we just saw a couple of seconds ago. Uh, so let's go wander awaiting rescue. So they cannot be suspended, and you cannot send a rescue request to them. Proceed. So this will bring us here. Okay, now, even though I had uh, items that were tag, when you're awaiting rescue, you're in this weird quantum state where you're, you may not actually be dead. Um, so you don't have access to whatever was in your backpack at the time. Um, and you're totally back to level, you know, level one. We're zeroed out on everything, but we are back in the village to a point. So we can't, if I try to exit, I can go to the dungeon center, which gives you access to some of the other, like, side um, dungeons. Um, and we might take a look at some of those here in a second. Um, you, you can't go down to the raccoon pots. You can see that they've, they've blocked those off. Um, there's no shop. You can deal with the bank. Um, I didn't deposit anything on previous runs could deal with the warehouse if you wanted to withdraw an item for 
um, another side run as you were going. You can manage your abilities. And then you can also handle uh, rescue requests. So would you like to adventure while you're awaiting rescue? Uh, sure. So you don't have any dungeons that you can go to. Sorry, it's not a rescue request. There's a separate um, go to the dungeon center. I think you have to try a rescue request from that external menu to get to pop up there. So let's go to the dungeon center. So the dungeon center, I got, I, I've got nothing to lose. I have no strength, no inventory. Um, basically, have a couple of options here. So we can talk to this feisty old woman, the concussive crone who loves explosions. Okay, care to play with my explosive rocks? Sure. You're burning up. Go and get blown up. Whoa my. So, novice level of this. Um, and you may recognize this as a little game called Minesweeper. This is effectively Minesweeper in Sharon form. So you can punch, and then you have to piece together what's the, the best one to hit next as Sheeran. So you're wandering around in an actual um, Minesweeper map. Hunger does get enforced here, if you see the, the gauge is going down while I'm wandering around. Um, there's not really that much that we can really do. A Paralysis Staff, Poison graft, Grass, none of these things are going to do anything for us. If we hit that bomb, um, it's going to kill us. It's going to one-shot things anyway. Um, one of the items that's in here that we can look at... So the 428 pot. Giving this pot a little shock will make it explode. It was originally worn by a store employee to draw a crowd. Um, that pot was actually 428 pot, and it got stuck on his face, which caused them to freak out. If someone had a lot of fun with the localization, or just the writing in general. You know, I don't know what the original Japanese would be for this, but um, someone had a lot of fun with the item descriptions and sharing the water. Um, sometimes too much fun, I think we had talked about on another stream. Um, anyway, the idea behind the uh, the 428 pot, um, as weirdly named as it is, is is that we can use it. Um, we can use it to explode some things. So, logically deducing here, okay, from we know here the one slot that we have, this has to be a bomb. For the two, we know these two. So for three, we know these two, and then one of these others, and then one and one. So Ooh, okay, so that was a bad choice, but it did get us a Chintala. So let's make our way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no way. I, I I probably should have done a paralyzed staff there, um, but I'm I'm not really not really playing optimally uh, because we're not gonna be staying here for long anyway. Um, <laughs> so it takes a special type of professional gamer to play explosion rocks and die from a non-explosive cause, um, but that's the sort of expertise that you get when you you come to this stream. Um, we do this dungeon? No. No. I think we've we've seen enough. Um, but for science now, you've seen the, the mini-game of the, the Minesweeper um, approach. And th there are items that you can get from there. Um, we can also go talk to see what other dungeons are available. Um, you can do the Underground Manor. What is the Underground Manor? Deep below the village. It is a manor where you keep descending. Um, sounds tough to be told to suddenly descend 99 floors, right? <laughs> but if it was easy and short, you'd just get bored of it too quickly. I, where is that number source from? Sharon, I think you're just... 
I think you're pulling my train. I think you're you're telling me stories. So the thing about the Underground Manor is that it's a 99-floor dungeon, but you can pick where you end up, and, and part of that... Um, it has to do with how much time you want to spend in the dungeon, and also um, trying to strategize the most optimal placement, because if you start at the very, very beginning, um, it'll take longer to go through the dungeon, but it will also potentially yield you um, better items as you go, along with the ongoing risk-reward, though, that, um, you know, there's no guarantee you're going to make it through the dungeon. So, it's if you go with an early choice, you may be trying to, to do a more combat-oriented run, or at least set up to, to grab equipment for later. If you try, you know, here, I'm going to do an item that will help you down in the lower levels. I'll raise your level. Then this dungeon doesn't have any rewards. Bring back to four items in the dungeon. Can't bring back pots. Ordinary pots. Use them to organize your inventory. So, just really quickly, we'll start here. Let's see if we can make a 10-floor dash. Dungeoneering life. Mm-mm-mm. Oh. Yeah, so... Um, shoddy Edge... But it grows weaker every time that it's used. Woof. It's... <laughs> it's fun being with Eggplant. I love you, Eggplant. Okay. Um, so, I mean, really at this point in the dungeon, we really don't want to be in a position of getting into combat anyway because we're going to be outclassed. Um, so the idea is, to, is we're going to have this on hand. Um... If we need to engage in combat, we can. Um, his defense weakens as it takes damage. Don't misunderstand things. Just because I transformed into a shield doesn't mean I'm happy or anything. Um, sure. Ah, equipped items will resonate with each other. So we I don't know that we've been able to show this um, or demonstrate this on previous streams, but because they are both the different... Uh, since they are both... Um, even though they're different weapon and shield, they both are the same class of item, the shoddy item. Um, and when you equip items of the same class together, they resonate so that you can wear uh, two bracelets. Um, now, we only have one bracelet. It's a strength bracelet. But if we had another one, we could totally do that. Um, invincible Grass. We won't take any more damage, but you'll still be vulnerable to other effects. We may end up doing that really quick if we can't find any sort of evasion. Um, pinning staff, knockback staff, things that'll keep us from getting wrecked um, or having to engage in direct combat. Um, fixer scroll is, is kind of, you know, just a, a big scroll that, that handles a lot of things in an emergency situation. Um, if you if you need healed up, it'll heal you up. If you're surrounded by monsters, hungry, your equipment is cursed, and it's night, and there's no light anywhere, it will help you with one of those things. Uh, but you can read it at night without light, which is an interesting um, exception to the normal rule with scrolls. So we, uh, we have this on hand. Um, break... Break glass in case of emergency, effectively. Um, so let's go on down. All right, we have this enemy type here, a scroll. Oh no, I tried to stretch it. I tried to stretch it as long as I could. One moment while I go get the actual controls off the switch.
Oh, sorry about that, everybody. Um, all right, so we're back on. Um, we so we have a scroll up here. We have an exit. Is it worth getting grass? Um, the staff, the staff, and the talisman's gear could give us some evasion for a later floor. Um, I'm going to try to make a break for it. You can see through the map that we are getting pursued by that enemy. Bishamon. It's not been identified yet, so it could do anything. So we are probably going to take this opportunity to identify this through use. Okay, so it's a sleep talisman. That's good to know. We'll have to keep that in mind. Let's go... Um, we have a staff that'll need to be identified too. Oh, there's that. Yep. So the gazer type... Um, I don't think we've hit these on previous streams before. The, the gazer... It was a super gazer type. And they can hit you with all sorts of status effects. Um... Hypnotize status means that they can effectively control your character. Um, not a fun enemy type. Let's draw them at least into line of sight. Let's see what the staff does. We have no idea how many charges we have, but let's at least see potentially about... Ooh. Okay, D-level staff. Sorry about that. Um, so that's interesting. So it de-leveled. You know what? We may want to swing that again. Okay, so it went from Ultra Gazer to Hyper Gazer to Super Gazer. Is it at a point where we can reasonably take it out? Revival Grass. So two Revival Grasses are good. All right. Now we're down. So you can see we lost a modifier there. It was a, sh a shoddy edge 27. Now it's 26. So um, we have a little bit to work with here. Let's see what the scroll up here is. Crow scroll. Again, another unidentified scroll. Um, the staves and talismans, always preferable when you're dealing with unidentified items um, because you have some space to potentially... I'm using them more than once. So this is a monster house. Um, we landed in a room um, with a ton of bad guys. Now, in terms of what we have available to us, uh, basically our closest egress is probably this exit right here. Um, I don't know that we're going to make it with that swordsman. Do we want to burn our invincible grass or not? Do we want to gamble? Let's see what happens. Okay, 50 damage. Could have been worse. We're going to take another shot here. All right, now we run for our lives. And let's see. Let's go ahead and throw... Sleep gets contagious. This gets us a little bit of separation. While we continue running for our lives, we'll disperse the crowd a little bit. Um, gotta take the Gyaza. Oh, no. Okay. I don't know the pot. Pot or the grass. If I go right, it's very possible I'm going to end up catching up with that crowd coming out of the original monster house. Um, hmm. I don't know that de leveling is going to help us here. We can. I 
pirates. Oh, he's like armored. Yeah, this is bad idea. So let's hit the fixer scroll. I don't know why I thought I was gonna get anything out of that. Okay, so they're paralyzed. That's good. They can basically block for me as I go up. We still have no idea where the exit is. Nor do we really have time to explore and pick up any of the items here. Um, I guess I can still go diagonally and get our lateral movement. Old pot, we have no idea what it's going to do here. Let's do another... S Sky Splitter isn't really relevant for us as a replacement for the Shoddy Edge. Um, the Invincible Grass is not really what I want here. I mean, it, it'll protect me from a few hits for... It'll it'll give me protection from a few hits, but I, I'm still going to get swarmed. Let... Well, so the idea was to try and get... Oh, get someone to sleep uh, and it's not going to happen so now what is that crow let's at this point we're in a pretty dire situation so um and i don't know that i want to linger around here too much longer um on stream uh, we want to probably get back to it that's my excuse for for, ex <laughs> for walking into a death trap. So, um, oh, so it, what did it do? So I can pick an item, is it a, is it an identify scroll? Or is it an enhancement scroll? We're gonna, we're gonna see, so our outside shot here is we're gonna identify this old pot. And the old pot's gonna be a hide pot that I can hop into. And then that's gonna let the monsters dissipate, they'll go their own way. That's my hope. Um, or this is going to be a, you know, like a fate scroll or something, and it'll fizzle because you can't um, enhance the weapon strength of the pot. Okay. So it was, it was an identify scroll. Cool. Zen pot. And we can look at the item description. I mean, you're immune to fire or explosion damage. This is not gonna. This is not gonna get us anywhere. I could try to de-level, but at this point, um, at this point, I'm already um, like it, we have to think about the actions, like burning an action to do that when I could either eat the invincible grass and get ready to to get hammered. Um, or, or to launch an attack. Let's go ahead and do the Invincible Grass. Let's swing this edge. Um, I think the, the spoiler is a bigger threat here. As we continue ruining our sword. The sword's most definitely a bigger threat. <laughs> so how long will this invincible status last? Exactly that long. Alright. Well, the good news is, is that we ended up taking out enough enemies um, that we can go check out some of this other stuff. Raccoon scroll... Let's go check out that sleep trap. Um, sharp pot. All, all this random stuff that we have. Um, the sta The staves are what we want here. God. What a disaster. Okay. Cool. Um, at least we got some more Bishop and Talismans. Um... 
let's let's see while we're confused and there's no guarantee about what we're gonna be able to do anyway. Sallow staff is a D leveler. Let's try the spruce staff. Okay, so that is a transient staff. So transient staff will warp um, a monster that gets hit with that um, all the way to the end. Um, uh, to the, the stairs. Why did I say the end? The, the end of the floor of the dungeon. It'll warp them to the stairs. Um, it'll put them in paralyzed status. Um, it's basically a, a good way to... It, it's a good get-out-of-jail-free get card for immediate combat, but you can't exit the dungeon without still resolving it one way or another. Um, sometimes it's fun to, to load up a bunch of enemies with um, a transient staff and then go through with a vacuum slash um, at the end of the dungeon. Who knows if we can do that now? I don't know if that raccoon scroll would be that. Um, that guy's coming. We still gotta run. Run, run, run. So there's our stairs. We found them. We've got enough reason here. So if I do the sleep, that should take them. If I... Let's see what the Asura Talisman will do. Sealed status, so they can't do any of their special techniques. Not really sure what that buys us with the Swordsman. It's more useful for mages. Alright. Oh, man. So the tricky balance here... Let's... We'll do a talisman on him. Try to put them to sleep. Try to do a talisman. Put them... to sleep. Um, I do not have an invincible grass. I don't want to get into a knockdown drag out with these guys. Let's go sleep one more time. There we go. Now... Are one of these staffs a knockback staff? Let's swing it and find out. Camellia. That's the stuff right there. Okay. 93rd floor. Where are we? Another monster house. Um, oh, well, except it's the whole level. So, um, so we can, we can get a full run of exactly what we're dealing with here. There are no walls. We are right here. What we want is this exit right here. How are we going to get there? Um, there's not really a clear path of what we've got. Um, I'm going to take the opportunity to read a scroll. If it's a vacuum slash scroll, it'll take out or, or at least do damage to everybody. Okay, so normally confusion not something that I'm I'm happy about as a defensive effect, but here um, we got a fair amount of value out of it potentially. Um, other than the gyozas that can't can't and won't do anything with it. Do I have a clear shot? If I do a knockback here with that camellia staff. Oh, I do have an Invincible Grass. I forgot I picked that up. Hmm. Well, let's, let's go the Camellia Staff to knock... Oh, of course. I can't knock back a Gyaza because any, any ranged or any sort of um, non-melee attack or status effect the Gyaza is going um, to do that. Do we have enough guns here to take out the Gyaza? No. If I do a Jonkle Grass, will that buy me anything? It's an unidentified grass. We don't know what it does. But... Otigariso. Okay. 
Does that give me enough space to try to take this thing out? It's been doing 62 damage. I have two hits, unless it crits me. Yeah. Um. Does that? Okay. So they're confused. Can I sidestep this Giaza in any way? Two Giazas. Oh, and now everybody's recovered. We do not have a lot of room to of wiggle room here, and let's do the invincible grass. See if we can barge our way past. The answer is no. The answer is we're just going to keep hitting that um, confusion trap. <laughs> just you know, walking pinata. Please come, please come smash me. All right. Let's see. Come on. Ugh. Okay, so confused status is gone now. So I need to end around and try to get to that door. I don't really have much else to work with here. Let me try the aqua grass. And that. That's that's the streamer god speaking there. And use this to try no. So we'll revive. Try to run for our lives here. Uh, it's okay. Can we get to that exit? Run, 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 run. Up. Take our shot. Go. How many monster houses do we have? One more. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, do I want to take up an action or do I want to try and draw them in? I do have a sleep talisman. These aren't Gyaza. I can potentially use that. Um, I mean, we're, we're really in a bad situation here. Let's see how much we can get. So, if we're going to use our last Sleep Talisman. No, let's warp. Let's warp out. Let's see where the warp will carry us. Okay. Oh, man. That was, that was a mistake that I, I should have paid for. Luckily, it missed. I didn't mean to hit the button there. Um... Boy. Salos was a D leveler. The spruce was a knockback. No, the camellia was a knockback. So I think we're in a situation here where I mean we might let's let's just let's let's just run it. Let's see if we can um We'll do a knockback if we have another charge. See if that buys us enough separation to go this way. So we continue to run for our lives. All right. And then we're back to... Okay, here we go. 95th floor. Hey, it's not a monster house for once. We have another Camellia staff. We'll use that. Get as much knockback as we can. The spruce was our transient one. I don't know that I want to deal with that. Um, unless we are really in a situation that we have to engage in one-on-one -on -one combat, like this. Okay, so he's locked at the exit, wherever that is. 
<laughs> okay, so that was a tank enemy. Um, cranky tank shot a cannon. So the lower level one of these are arrow tanks, and they'll they'll do ranged shots. They also move very quickly because they're on tank treads. Um, and then when they level up, they shoot explosive shots like that, um, and then frequently kill you in one hit. So. What the Underground Manor shows us is uh, you want to make sure that you have your best possible game for evasion. Um, as we've so thoroughly demonstrated, you really cannot take one-on-one -on -one combat as your primary means of success here. Like you're, you're just you're going to be in trouble no matter which way you go. So you want to avoid and sidestep as much as possible. But I will say, I was not expecting to get to the 95th floor. That We, we navigated a couple of uh, Monster House dungeons there. Um, <laughs> minus nine shoddy edge. Yeah, it was getting pretty dire at the end. No, we're not going to redo this dungeon. But um, you got a lot of work to do. Thanks for the encouragement. Um there's another couple of other puzzle dungeons that you can do, but let's let's get back to it. Let's get back on the critical path here. We'll go to the let's go to the top menu for a second and see if in the while we were futzing around in the um, with the explosive rocks, getting killed in non-explosive ways, and in the underground manner. Let's see if we have uh, did anybody rescue us. Wow. Now that, that's pretty cool. So someone rescued us while we were on the stream, while we were doing other stuff. So you received a revival spell from, um, and see, if I had done English only, I wouldn't have gotten that. So we're definitely going to send a thank you letter to this person. You are amazing. Thanks. What item can we send? So it goes to whatever you have in your inventory. Um, so it is certainly good manners to send something. Now the question is, is what do we want to send? We w we're saving the fever pot with earth scrolls. To, to multiply those earth scrolls and, and enhance our shield. We have the, the weapons here, particularly the modifiers for Synthesis Leader. Maybe this is a good place to end up the stream. Uh, Andy Nealon's going to start streaming for Eggplant here in about five minutes anyway. He's going to do his Breakfast Spelunky stream. Um, maybe if I can do, the, um, do a raid correctly, we can switch over there real quick after we sort this out. Let's send him, um, you know what, I'm not really as worried about weapon modifiers, and he really did me a solid there, so let's send him a Beast Fang plus four. Let's do it. Thank you, mystery rescuer person. Now, was it worth doing that? Um, I don't know. But, it's fun to demonstrate it for the point of the stream. I still feel like we're going to go to to Riva and get wrecked here pretty quickly. Um, but that was cool. So we can re request rescue up to two more times. And now, oh, and now we're back in it with an escape scroll. Which we are going to use immediately. Because you better believe... I, I don't think I want to take that cash box shield where we got to go. Um, oh, I don't want to pick it up. I want to read it. Let's read that. So Jirkichi's in the 14th floor. He'll stay behind there. Um, a staunch bracelet is the, the mystery bracelet that we picked up, which is not, not really anything that we're going to want to keep. Um... He's holed up in the dungeon, so we gotta need to hurry up and get out of here. 
Um, so we'll, for the staunch bracelet, just for the, for the sake of showing what it does, we got prevent stats from max HP, max strength, and level from being decreased. So if you if you're fighting a polygon spin enemy that whose only attack is to to reduce those things, you're in luck. Um, how many enemies do that that it's worth taking your bracelet slot on? Not really that many. However, what we can do, um, and what we had done in a previous stream uh, way too long ago, um, so these are going to be weeds now, as we go down to the raccoon pots. Yeah, these are totally weeds. Uh, I mean, discard it. But we will definitely throw that staunch bracelet in there. And then we'll take out the weeds here. Discard those. We have a strength bracelet that we can put into. So we will put these in to cook. And then now that we are... Oh, did I... I was too busy babbling. I, I went past the prompt, didn't I? Insert it into the secret pot. There we go. So now we're set up. Um, so next week when we stream, same time, same channel... Uh, well, maybe not the same time. Uh, we might start a little bit later, like we have been, around 8.30 Central. But now, the items in that pot will cook um, in real time. So we'll have seven days to, to bring up effects. And we can see what's in the secret pot the next time around. Um, and I actually think that's, that's a, a pretty good way... Um, that's a pretty effective way to end the stream. Um, I don't know. I, we don't necessarily want to go into any other dungeon or, or get locked into anything. Um, we can go check our point. To oh! We can get some more storyline. Attentive viewers will remember exactly what trap we're talking about. I believe this was... Were we halfway through the Tower of the Past or the Tower of the Present that we saw this? But we have rescued this character. And now... <laughs> I'm traveling with my younger sister on a quest to avenge our father. Separated from my sister. And carelessly stumbled into the trap. So... Morph into monsters and use their abilities as I wish. And to Blade B right now. But if I level up, I'm sure I'll be able to morph into more. So. What we've got here is. Which monster to morph into? At the Raccoon Dog Shop. So we can. Uh, Ocon. So the, there are two sisters, Okan and I'm blanking on the name of the other one, but so the Okan turns into monsters um, for attack. So she'll wander the dungeon just like this, but for an attack, she'll turn into a blade bee or, um, or momentarily turn into another enemy. Um, very useful for inflicting status effects. Um, different things there. The other sister can turn into an item, can turn into a sword or a shield that you can uh, use to, to build up. Um, which can be really useful if you're completely starting fresh and you have no equipment. Um, you can build her up as an NPC. She gains levels. Um, and the levels that she has, I think, apply as modifiers to the sword or shield. Um, and it can give you useful... 
persistent equipment in a pinch when you don't have any. So she's down now at the shop, and we will go ahead and have her come with us um, next time we run on the next stream. So we have an additional NPC. So we've got Okan, we'll have Jirokichi. We've got, I think by the time we come back around to the entrance of the Tower of Fortune, we'll have the potential of getting Tao. Uh, I don't think you can have three NPCs though. But that'll be that'll be a good party. Okan is is only level one, I think, but still worth going ahead and getting her some experience up front to uh, to build up over time. So we can still check out on. Doo -doo -doo. Let's go check out the point shop. Four hundred and forty points uh, can get us a synthesis pot. Um, it can get us a blank scroll. So you know what? Let's t let's do the blank scroll um, because we can go ahead and cash that in for an earth scroll and do the fever pot. I think that's a good a good one. Um, also an undo grass. Um, we won't be so lucky with an escape scroll um, getting rescued on stream next time. So, we'll go to the warehouse. Well, let's see. Do I have all of my stuff here? I have um, an alert bracelet is actually really good. That protects from sleep. Water cutter plus one for another modifier. So we have one earth scroll, two earth scrolls. Um, I won't be able to modify the blank scroll until we get into the warehouse, but that's fine. Let's go manipulate our inventory a little bit. So we need to store... What do I want to store? Um, the pinning staff we want to save for another time. Knockback staff. These are good items to have hanging around in your back pocket if you need them for a rescue. If you need to, to cut your way to um, a downed uh, rescuee in a hurry. Uh, balance staff we'll keep on hand. Mage staff. Mage staff we can probably sell. Um, again, kind of like the confusion staff. I, I I tend to like predictability with our defensive abilities. Um, mage staff is it could be any bullet um, coming out of, of of a mage that a mage could do for like lightning or anything like that, or warp or who knows what happens. So. Um, I mean, it's, it is better than a Confusion Scroll, though, because at least you get um, a better set of benefits. We'll definitely store those, and we'll, we'll probably mess around with our inventory again um, before we head out. But we can withdraw our Fever Pot. We want to take that out. Perfect. Nope. Now let's go... Let's go catch a Fever. We'll go to the warehouse. Sheeran always has um, every town gives you um, a warehouse. Now, the original Sheeran, what you could do is you could place items in a warehouse um, even later in the dungeon, and then they would show up um, in other warehouses, if I remember right. Um, and that was really how you handled persistent runs, like cross-run progression um, in a way um, other than the tagging system that we've seen at other times. So, um, place items here, and you won't lose them even if you collapse. You can use the items, but for item trades, or when you want to send items. Um, details about the warehouse. So, what we will do... It, basically, the warehouse gives us uh, a sandbox to do any sort of inventory manipulation that we need to do. Um, items like peaches won't deteriorate in here, so you can't wander around in a, in a warehouse... Uh, magically trying to take your um, your regular peach into a juicy peach. Um, you want 
It won't let you abuse them that way. But what we can do is we will take the blank scroll and we will write. These are all the scrolls that we know. And we will write an earth scroll. Now we have an earth scroll. And we will insert that into the fever pot. We will take out the earth scroll here. So git. Insert. And then we're going to get the other earth scroll. And then insert. And look at that. We went from three to six. The contents inside duplicated, surpassing its max capacity. So we've caught our fever. The fever pot has exploded. And now we have the spoils of all these earth scrolls that we can read in here. Five to eight. Man, there's something about reading these on stream that we're we are getting some amazing luck. Okay, eight to nine. Nine to ten. Catch up the other three. And we read that. Score, 11 to 14. I tell you what. I should play on stream all the time. Alright, so... That that more than doubled, I think, what we had before. Um, so... Playing for the Fever Pot there really helped us out. Um, Cashbox Shield is in a, is in a much better state. Um... If I had more points, I could go ahead and do the synthesis pot and, and start bringing in the other uh, weapon modifiers that we have. I don't think we had one of those in storage, and I think I was short from the point shop before. So, but we can go ahead and um, let's let's talk about our inventory a little bit here. So, the shadowbind talismans, seal talismans. Um, Honestly, because we're going to be starting our run again from Destiny Trail, uh, most of this stuff we can just sell. Um, like, there's there's really just no point. Um, sell or put in the pot. Um, the raccoon pot's downstairs. Perceptive pot. Um, yeah, we can sell that. So let's go talk to our friend, the shopkeeper. Let's sell some things. So, seal talismans, on all of this stuff except for the balance staff that I want to carry into the dungeon. Warp grass, heal grass. Strength grass we'll go ahead and take. Um, the katana plus two, um, we can remove the curse on and we can use it in synthesis later. Um, the perceptive pot we can go ahead and get rid of. Uh, the hilarious pot we can keep because, because it's just funny. Um, let's go ahead and do that. That gets us a good chunk of change. And then, oh, I didn't mean to buy. But we can see what they have to buy here. They have a Revival Grass, um, which can be pretty... We'll go ahead and buy that. Revival Grass is, is almost always worth it. If for nothing else, we can put it in our inventory and we can use it to rescue other people. Um, but I'll, I'll keep it on hand. Uh, we already have a Juicy Peach. Uh, these We have equipment, so we don't need to worry about uh, Fanger Shield. Peck, the pickaxe types allow you to break through uh, dungeon walls, similar to how the, the Matic or the pickaxe would allow you to do in Splunky. Um, not, not particularly useful in our case, though. Um, at least not right now. We may, we may find a more suitable use case for it later. So I think... I think we're actually mostly good here. Let me... So the preservation pot, we have anti-confused bracelet, which is good. Um, we can sell the weeds. 
Okay, that's three. It's three more Giton than I had before. Um, we'll keep the Dragon Grass. Uh, uh, I'm probably get rid of these just to free up some in inventory spots. They're okay. Shadowbind Talons are talismans are probably my favorite talismans, but. At the same time, I don't know if it's worth clogging up an inventory slot. Again, we're going to be piling up items as we go on the next run. Um, so we can, we can get rid of those. I don't know that the Onigiri is worth keeping there either. Um, we want the alert bracelet. We'll actually store it. We'll, well, actually, we'll, we'll probably wear it. Um, because the alert bracelet keeps us from getting sleep status, and that is absolutely something that we are interested in here. We'll get rid of the rest of these. As I absentmindedly thumb through the menus. So, I don't know. You know, hopefully this has been an interesting trip through some of the other peripheral systems with, with Sheeran. Um, we got to see her rescue actually live. I, that is really fortuitous that we, we got that on on stream I'm really happy that that happened um we'll sell the perception grass what else do we got super torch alright I think we're good some of the rest of this stuff we can go ahead and store so this is some of the, the mundanity is mundanity a word? it is now some of the mundane activities that you have to deal with on uh, cross runs here um, we'll do we want to wear the alert bracelet we'll store both of these the water cutter we want for the modifier the bracelet we want for future raccoon pots what else can we do here we will we will store that katana for the modifier for future synthesis. What else do we got? Um, the anti confuse bracelet. Um, we'll definitely store that. We'll keep the dragon grass. I mean, I probably could have sold the dragon grass, but it, it's right on the right on the line. I think we're good. We can go get that katana uncursed really quick. The Curse Breaker. I can remove the curses and seals on your items that are not inside a pot for 500. Do you want to do it? Yeah. So, what have we got here? You're all clear now. And come by again when you're vexed by vexes. So, one other thing that we can demonstrate here pretty quick is we can go back to the original town. Where this all started, you can do the tutorial dungeons again in the beginner house if you need to brush up. We are going to go to the rich man's house because there's someone we want to talk to here. <sighs> Koji Ruta. He's a lovely fellow. I'll tell you one thing. People have a sort of defined role that they must play. Tadpoles become frogs. Calves become cows. Dragonfly nymphs. And no matter where they go and what they do, they are born into those roles and cannot escape them. So again, this is the game kind of expositing on the ideas of fate and what it means. And, and Kojiruta 
absolutely frames that in a in a class struggle here. It says, you farmers or wanderers should just keep yourselves in the corner of the world and live out your lives. So, but being being the, benev the benevolent elite that he is, Koji Ruta, will allow us to make me your servant. So that the framing here is, you know, make me your servant, no way, I'm not going to deal with this at all. Um, and you could certainly do that. However, if you say make me your servant, wander you are servant one and that ferret is servant two. Make sure that you have trained hard enough that you won't become a drag during emergencies. You people just go ahead and keep honing your skills. If I ever need you, you'll be ready for me. So the, the thing about Koji Ruta is that he is an NPC that you can take with, into the dungeon. So we can... We have Okan coming with us. Um, Jirokichi's on, on the last floor of the Tower of the Dungeon. We won't have, have him at the start, but we can go ahead and start building up Koji Ruta too. Head to the Hermit's Lands. So now Koji Ruta will be our second NPC. And any time that we want to bring him on a run, we can certainly do that. One of the other NPCs that's available to uh, uh Well, I don't know if he's available to us yet. I think we have to get past the Reva fight on the Tower of Fortune for Gen to be available to us. But Gen, the very large cat. <laughs> Huge, ugly cat here. Is this the pet of the house? Well. The hunter cat. Genishin. I don't have time to deal with whatever little task has blown your rude selves my way. Be gone. So. So, Jen is, is fairly hostile. Um, the conditions, you have to meet certain conditions to unlock him as a potential NPC. I believe it's completing the Reva fight on the Tower of Fortune. Um, almost like a sign of respect. Um, or no. Actually, you know what? I am I am crossing things up. There is an old lady. It, no, it's not here. There's a, there's some catnip juice that we can get. Um, and again, once once again, talking about fate and and how we have to accept it. Um, beginner house is not the one we want. It is here. We go. Yep, yep, yep. Great. Cool story, bro. Okay. Somewhere around you can get catnip juice. And that catnip juice is what you can give to Jen. There we go. I'm going to try my special catnip juice. This batch is freshly made. Fierce, manly animal. A manimal. <laughs> All right, catnip juice it is. Now, now we can go back to our, our very angry friend, the hunter cat. Demeter changes just a little bit once the catnip juice is in play. Very happy. Meow. <laughs> okay. So I don't think Jen will come with us as an NPC. Um, it may be that... Well. Probably shouldn't speak out of turn. Anyway, with two NPCs, with Okan and uh, Koji Ruta, there's, I don't think we can bring on another one anyway. So... But that, and then the katana has been uncursed, which is great. 
let's really quickly... We have the Undo Grass. Um, let's get the Alert Bracelet out. We will wear that. We can take in our Preservation Pot... We can insert in the undo grass. Um, and we'll have a little bit of time before we start meeting Scoopy enemies that'll insert dirt into the pots. Um, so we can go ahead and just spread out what we have here. And then we have preservation pot. All good, all good. We can go to pause at the katana. Nope. All right. We'll check the point shop one more time, and then we will actually head back out. It is really cool that we were able to get rescued, though. I was not expecting that to happen on stream. So we got... Um, we have 170. So we could do another preservation pot to extend our inventory... That wouldn't be too bad. I'm I'm just going to do another undo grass though. And then we'll we'll save up. Maybe with the next run we'll have enough to to pick up that synthesis pot and clear out some of the swords that we have. Consolidate those. But in the meantime, we can go ahead and get We have two undo grass and a revival grass. I think we're in pretty good shape. So we can get back into it. At least, I think... I thought that would be a good place to end the stream. Doesn't look like Andy has started up yet. I think maybe... What we can do... Is... Let's, let's breeze through Destiny Trail real quick. Um... Oh, Koji maybe Kojiruta. So that's interesting. So, okay, we have Okan. Kojiruta said he was going to the tower. Maybe he joins us up at the tower? So if we pay a fee, he'll go find something. Let's go ahead and do it. Oh, another NPC. Oh. So you can talk to Okan and you can... There are certain enemy types that you can... Um, you just picked up a katana. Go do that. So across runs, the katana will be upgraded a certain amount. We have a water cutter as well. Oh, and your shield up a lot of stuff here early on. I'm not really at risk at all. Even with only 20 HP. Cash box shield. Our equipment is classed up enough that we're in pretty good shape. Fear scroll. Not a fan. Or at least... Not for a while. Stomach expander we could use. Oh, thank you, Okan. Good attack. Alright, so we got... Can we get... Can we get to the tower... Towers of past, present, and future before I have to end the stream in a couple of minutes. We shall see. Oh, there's the Blade V attack there. Solid attack. Nothing wrong with that. Um, from there. Tau! Yeah, sure. Wow. 
since Kojiruda, who knows where he went to. Bowl shield. And some Nikon. Make our way to the third floor. Uh, blade B down below. So this is pretty... Oops. Still pretty breezy, though, since we've kept all our equipment. You know, and this is this is the thing. Like, once you get to a point where you can tag your equipment and keep it across runs, or or if you time it well enough like we did where we got rescued, um, or, or you get to a run and decide that you can uh, preemptively nope out with a escape scroll, um, just... It still gives you the opportunity to go through these opening levels pretty quickly. Swap scroll or swap staff. I will swap with confusion scroll. Is there an exit here? Yes. We're on the clock. Can he do it? Wow, lots of points. Oil scrolls not worth the inventory manipulation to get it. Preservation pot will make it though. Bowl, binary, water. Uh, no, let's just start with that. That will be fine. Easy peasy. Another, another point switch. All right, so fifth floor Destiny Trail, um, and that's that's where we're gonna have to end it. I have a hard stop at uh, nine thirty my time, so um, I think we're in a good spot. We're in a much better spot than we started the stream at. Um, we su successfully escaped out of the Tower of Fortune with everything that we have intact. We, we demonstrated a rescue. Um, we um, showed our expertise at the game by losing a game of Explosion Rocks in the most embarrassing way possible. Um, we almost made it to the end of Underground Manor um, on a quick 10-run dash. So that was pretty eventful. Um, thanks to everybody who uh, jumped on. Um, everybody kind of hovering on stream. Everybody that's been watching on VUDs and, and following. Definitely appreciate that. Um, if you have any questions about Sheeran, feel free to hit me up in the Discord uh, channel for the Eggplant Show. Um, or on Twitter or anything. Always happy to help. Always, um, willy, w always willing to evangelize for one of my favorite games. So... Um, Thanks again to everybody for watching. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a happy weekend. Peace.